Hi, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 3 of our Angular Automation with Protractor, TypeScript and Cucumber video series. And in this video we'll be talking about introduction to Angular 2 application and building it. Actually this video is part B which means it's a complete continuation of the previous part which is part 2. So before watching this part, please watch part 2 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's quickly see what we're going to discuss in this particular video. We are going to modify our Angular CLI application to look something like this. As you can see, this is not a very beautiful application on the planet right now. But yes, this application is kind of proving the point that we can do some of the functionalities or look at how we can easily understand how the components and HTML files of an AngularJS are actually working together. If you could recall from our previous video, we changed a value in a component file and instantly the file within the HTML was also changed automatically in our application and that's the power of Angular itself. So it's dynamic, you change anything and the binding value is going to be changed automatically. I'm saying that binding, so basically we will be talking about the binding a lot while we start working with it. So understanding what is the different concept of this whole angler is not the whole intention of this course, but to show you some basic idea of how angler CLI application can be built very quickly is what is the intention so that you can take this idea while automating the application using protractor. So we are going to discuss some of these important concepts very quickly, something like bindings, as I already said, and then we're going to also talk how to map an event of a button from an HTML file to the value or a method available within a component. And similarly calling a method from a component from a HTML code and calling a variable from a component from an HTML code and using ng model for dynamic binding. And also we'll see how to just create a bootstrap to bring some nice looking view that we can bring in for a table or a button. So let's quickly see this in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio Code right now. All right, so this is the same code which we were working in our previous video. So what I'm going to do basically this time is I'm just going to hop over to our HTML file over here. Then you can see that we have a very, very simple single binding over here. And that's why we have a result like this, All right? So if I want to do a few changes over here in the title, it is automatically going to change. Now how is this happening? Just like, let's take a quick look or maybe a deep look inside what's really happening in here. As you can see, this particular file, the TS file, it's a class and it's an, it has a name called app component. And we're exporting this particular class. And this export is happening actually because we are using TS file. So it's a TypeScript file basically. And there is a variable called title. And within this title, we have an execute automation as a value. If you just hover your mouse over here, you can see it is of type string. And that's why you have assigned this particular value. So if you assign some other values, the type will automatically change in here. So these are all basically coming from a TypeScript language. That's the power of TypeScript as I already said. TypeScript is really, really deeply integrated in Angular applications as well, right? All right, so as that said, if I come over here, instead of wasting so much of time on talking on these concepts, I'm going to quickly write a small button this time. So you can understand like how easily we can do that. So basically to write a button, I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna add a break so that I really don't have to have that particular thing over here. All right, there are one break. And within this, I'm going to create a button. And you can see that Visual Studio Code is also bringing us all the help which is required for performing a button operation. So the button, I'm just going to tell that it is off. We can give some uh, name for this particular button. And let's call this name as maybe uh, sample btn. Something like that. And it is going to have an event this time. And let's call this as a click event and you can see that the event I'm actually putting in a parenthesis this time very very simple to to map a click event bind and this click event once you click this button it is going to call a method 
let's call this method as let's say it is going to increment some value for us like one two three four five something like that so for doing that i'm just going to say increment value this is going to be the method which i actually require and then let's give a uh, text for this particular button let's say uh, i'm going to say click me or something like that and i'm just going to close this button there we go and once i save this instantly you can see it has compiled and if i go to the html file you can see there is a click me button if you click it right now nothing is going to happen basically because we have not implemented anything for that particular method increment value right so i'm going to create this particular method in our app.component.ts as we have this title that we grabbed from that particular component class for this particular html head tag similarly for this click me button we are going to implement this increment value method so i'm just going to write a very quick method here and let's call this increment value this is the method and it is basically going to increment a value so i'm also going to create a, a local variable here let's say incremented value uh, and i'm going to set this as one for now uh, basically i'm assigning a value for that so every time i click this particular button it is going to increase the value so increment so we need to use this this keyword to access the local variable so this increment value plus is equal to one so it is going to increment a value by one so now the method implementation is done and now if i go back to my html file i need to call this particular variable so let me copy this particular variable very quickly as we have this title i'm just going to call this particular click uh, over here so maybe i can just write a uh, small uh, let's call this as h2 tag and uh, we can say you clicked for i'm just gonna this you clicked for this times something like that and then i'm just going to close this particular h2 i'm going to save it very quickly and now if i go back to my page you can see you clicked for one time right so now you can see that this one is actually coming from over here in your incremented values we have already set this value to one and that's why the one is actually coming so now if i click this second time you can see you clicked for two times so if you keep on clicking the value is going to increment for you right so this fast it is to write a very simple code over here so the binding of a method within an html file is that easy right and similarly you can also perform other operations so we have saw how we can bind a, a variable and we can uh, bind a method over here and similarly we can also uh, write a very simple code to perform an dynamic binding let's say if you want to type a text in a text box and then you have to bind a value dynamically for that then you can use this piece of code so you can see that we have an ng model so this is actually from the angular js itself and this ng model we're going to say like username and then you bind them dynamically so instead of bringing it from a component this time we are dynamically bringing in and binding it over here right so i'm just going to save it so instead of this i'm just going to say we need a br for a break and now if i go over here you can see hello so now if i type like karthik it is automatically going to bind the name for me over here right that fast it is so you can perform all the operations there is no server side uh, request over here so everything is happening from the client itself right so you can write this kind of code very easily using angular the final thing which i'm going to show you is to create a table so i can just paste this piece of code in order to instead of writing all the code by myself and then if i see here the table is automatically created right it is again the same html file so you can also uh, incorporate the 
bootstrap or here like styles adding a styles and also performing that operation all those things you can do very quickly from this particular HTML file. So again, those are pretty much straightforward or simple like a normal HTML file. So you can do all these things using an Angular. So in order to show you how the bootstrap is actually working, the only thing that we need to do is to first of all install the bootstrap for our ng module so that it can be available for us and then we can perform the operation. So since we have this Angular CLI installed, we also have Bootstrap and all those important libraries required for writing the code. And you can actually see that we already have the Bootstrap available for our application. So I don't really have to do anything in here. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the max CDN link and I'm just going to paste it over here. I'm going to save it. So once I save it and now if I go back to my application, you can see that instantly there is some few changes in the UI. So you can see that the table has a border and also you can see that once I click this, it's highlights and the button has changed a little bit and the alignment has changed here. So all those things are happening because of the bootstrap and the style links that is available from the bootstrap. So it is automatically coming for you. So basically the whole idea or whole intention of this particular two videos so far is how easily you can write a code in Angular and how to work with the bindings, how to work with the different controls like button and dynamic bindings using ng model and all those things. And we can also see that the, how the objects are being identified here. So basically for the text box, we have something like an input control and there's an underscore ng content hyphen co class is equal to this. So basically everything is dynamic here. So this is not a very concrete way of identifying that particular control. But if you see the click me control, you can see that it has a name as sample btn. Again, this name is something which we gave in our code and that's why the name is coming. So these are some of the most important thing that we need to have while we start automating this particular application in the next video onwards right so from our next video we are not really going to use this particular application for automating rather we have an another application built so we are going to make use of that application for automating it instead of automating a very very simple application something like this right so this is a high level introduction of angular using angular cli guys once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day